All right, here we are, Mark Surgeon again, and we will go with sculpting for today. Now, uh, we will do this workflow based. So, uh, the last time what I did with the short key is we can import it, import, and this is uh, this was an OBJ export, so I'll import it as an OBJ and look for the file. So, short key base mesh, it has a material file attached, which was it's not that much important for now because we don't have anything crazy yet. All right, so here's the Sharky file. If I press Alt E, that shows the wireframe in my configuration. Um, to be to be able to use Alt E uh, in object mode and in sculpting mode, it's like you can go in viewport overlays and right click here and change shortcut and use Alt E uh, the extrusion. So Alt E is for extrusion this is what happens but in object mode and in sculpting mode it works pretty well and i like it and it's, um, yeah, it's a practical thing now when we are in edit mode it may show something like this which one is a little bit annoying it happens because the shading is affected so what does it mean let me go back to um the edit mode i'm sorry object mode uh, turn off the keys you can see how these faces are this one this is faceted so yeah here at this position so you can see this is one uh, quad this is one quad but here on top there's no edge here so this looks like this one large chunk of polygon and the reason is because when we are in edit mode these edges are soft edges that means me these polygon faces these faces are blended together but these are not because all of the edges are highlighted as sharp edges so number two and press a to select all and mesh and shading and smooth edges and then we can go back to uh, object mode and everything is smooth all right this is fairly coarse so this is why it looks a little bit uh, broken but uh, we should uh, use a subdivision modifier to get rid of that. Now here we are, modifier. And let me show you something that's uh, maybe new. So add modifier and we can add subdivision surface. However, we can add it faster too. Now the way to do it is press Ctrl 1. And that will apply a modifier to the model. So Ctrl 1 and that will apply subdivision modifier and apply it because we pressed one, it will apply it on one level. If we press Control two, it will add two levels. And if you do it, and if you're not satisfied, it will not add another subdivision modifier on top of it. It will overwrite what you have. Okay, so that is what we can do. Now this mesh, if we are going to sculpt mode, we can do that by using Control and Tab, which bring up the pie menu and then go into sculpt mode, which one is the bottom. So control tab and I'm moving the mouse over this and switching to sculpt mode, moving over object mode. And this is how we can easily switch. To do it fast, control tab, move down, sculpt mode, control tab, move left, object mode. Okay, so that's how you do it. All right, so you don't need to hurry this one, uh, but this is like a gesture based control. All right, so let me go back to sculpt mode and see what we can sculpt. The first and most important brush is actually the grab brush. G is the hotkey for grab brush. F is the hotkey for changing the size. And look what's going on here. So we have some kind of a mesh and these yellow dots are jumping between the mesh points. And these mesh points are actually the original mesh points. We have way more than that because of the subdivision. But this subdivision, this is just a modifier. That means it's like a virtual state of the model. It's not really performed yet. It's not permanent. So to be able to sculpt, you can do one thing. It's just apply a modifier and then you will be able to pick up more uh, points or you can apply a specialty modifier. Now here, let me go back to object mode here because this model is so coarse at this level, it's just not really uh, good. It's good as a base mesh, but it's not good for a sculpting uh, base. We will just hit Control A and apply this modifier 
And now if we are switching to sculpt mode, we can actually pick those in between polygons as well if we want to sculpt. Now here's something, a big question. So yes, I want to sculpt with symmetry, but there's no symmetry in here. Uh, usually in the layout mode, you were switching tools. So you, you switch tools, but you're not switching layouts. So which one is, you know, okay, we can expect all things working simultaneously. So we're switching to the sculpting tab and that's switching the tools. But when your sculpting tab is your main tab, you can easily go back to object mode. It still shows sculpting, but when you're switching back, you, you will get all the brush settings, including symmetry, uh, that we really are interested in. So symmetry is X, so you can work to left to right, right to left, and now I can just move it away. This is just be careful because the brush I was using previously is the grab brush, but it switches to draw brush, which one is not really a friendly brush at the beginning. It's a good brush, but not so many people using it directly for sculpting. Okay, let me undo the change and press G again because you know sculpting interface actually selected the default brush and now I can just move it in and out. And use a specialty modifiers that can really help us in the work. And that is the multi-res modifiers. So in a modifier list we can choose multi-res or if you are in scout mode and you press control 2 for example it will apply a multi-res modifier so again if you are in object mode and you press control 1 2 3 it will apply a subdivision modifier if you are in sculpting mode it will apply a multi-res modifier now multi-res modifier it's like a headquarter it's like a a control area it's not just making the smoothing it is also providing you an opportunity to be able to sculpt on higher and lower levels now the reason we have to sculpt to be able to sculpt higher and lower levels because if we are walking down in sculpt mode for example level zero I can make drastic changes fairly easy so I can pull this out lift up this head it's like Wow, so hungry, pulling the belly, a little bit of the throat. Yep, it's really, really making changes. And then I can crank up and look for and turn for smaller details to add wrinkles and other parts. All right, so we are going back and forth between these resolutions. The level viewport is something else. The reason we have level viewports is because when you're switching back, uh, at this uh, stage, when you're switching back, you actually sculpting levels this is set to zero. You actually um, uh, automatically dialing down the resolution. Imagine that you have you know a couple models, a couple hundred uh, perhaps, and uh, and just everything is in high resolution. And that can cause a serious lag in the computer performance. So this is a good way to somewhat balance the overall thing. All right, so let me talk about the numbers exactly. We have just made a basic sculpting stuff. Let me undo this because I'm not really want to go into this direction. So I'll make a change, sculpt mode, and if I have the undo amount, all right, so I have it and go back to sculpt mode and we don't have the modifier yet so I'll apply the modifier control 2 and yeah so we are back at the base alright and if you delete the modifier you can always go back to your original model so if you just hit on X and delete the modifier alright so there we go and let me talk about the numbers so we are in sculpt mode now and look at here, we have statistics, and that's 41,000. Now, if we are in edit mode, that's showing only the 1,000th uh, range, which one is, as you know, it's really, really beneficial to just save some uh, memory. Now, let me go back and sculpt mode. And what I like to do is sculpting on the lower resolution so only the necessary resolution nothing higher because it speeds up the process and sculpt base turn on and what does it mean uh, when, when I'm using the sculpting brush it will create changes on the initial mesh as well 
So for that, enable symmetry before anything is changed. And I can now just a little bit, you know, changing the length of these, moving, uh, maybe this one is pulled a bit out. Yeah, the, the corner of the mouth. The brush size, again, is, should be adjusted by pressing F and moving the mouse left to right. I'm using the mouse, which was not ideal, but because most of you may not have a tablet, uh, it is easier for me to demonstrate what things are actually are when we are dealing with sculpting with a mouse. Again, which one is not optimal, but you know, it's it's not really a fair advantage if I'm using a graphics tablet. Okay, changing the large size and pulling, I want to increase the belly, and as you see, I'm rotating all around. So middle click is rotating all around. And using scroll to zoom out in and out you can use also all control and middle mouse and shift and if you want to focus on an area hover over an area hold on alt and click with a middle mouse and that would be the center so if you're zooming back it will be right away back at it okay so these are the changes i made and scott base mesh was turned on so when we are going back to object mode everything is transferred okay so the the look is is just very very the same so this is a good non-destructive way to increase stuff all right so let me go back to sculpt mode and it's time to look for the various brushes so at this stage sculpt mode is set to two let me turn of sculpt base mesh optimal display is turned on and off alt e to turn off the resolution of the mesh and i'm resizing the, uh, the the model, you know, the brush, and going to the standard draw brush. So X is the hotkey for the brush. Let me check symmetry is working fine, which was great. And I'll start dragging around. And if the brush is too strong, and you want to use, especially when you're using a mouse, you need to adjust the strength accordingly. So Shift F is the strength value. So if you lower it. That would be much softer, definitely. And let me change the um, so brush size. Excuse me, brush size. Spending so much time in ZBrush, it's just some hot. Sometimes the hotkeys are just coming in. Uh, just uh, I can't deny that I'm using that as well. So here we are, just creating a little bit of a brow, eyelid, something uh, that works. All right, just adding some volume in here with the with the draw brush, okay, and maybe the tip of the nose. So just playing with that. All right, and um, and uh, maybe maybe here I will add some volume, but that's it. All right, so nothing crazy, and if you are making something that's off. You can use the shift key for smoothing. And if you want to, but be careful because the shift may be too strong. So you have to adjust the shift as well. Now this is how it works. Shift has a hotkey directly. But if you are holding now shift, that's a temporary change to the smoothing brush. If you want to uh, adjust it, you have to shift S and that is the hotkey for the brush itself and then you will able to shift F and change the intensity of the brush, lower it and go back to your draw brush and when you're holding now shift key that will switch to this particular brush with these settings so that means the strength of the shift brush will be reduced. Okay, so that's kind of an important thing. You can you see um, these little edges now here comes and play the inflate brush. So I'm not going in order, I'm going in the logical uh, structure of it. So I is the hotkey for the inflate brush and inflate is just adding up volume and it's great to preserve some volume in certain areas. So why not, we, are, we can increase and add some chin volume here which one is just too much, so I use shift and smoothing it out. But that's where we are. Oh, like, I like this, this look. It's not exactly a shark, but it could be a funny one. 
uh, we can we can make it a little, little bit mean in the end but it's just uh, going with directions so that is about inflate the good thing about inflate is if you are using it large enough and holding the control key you can invert the effect of inflate and if you have limbs or thinner areas you want to just change the uh, the cross section it is working great right. so this can see how puffy this is so I'm using the control and just narrow it down and it just helps a lot okay so that is that is about inflate um, all right uh, what's up next so here we are and uh, we want to just add some details here and there so around the chin uh, and but how to do it uh, maybe the resolution won't be enough so we made a couple of changes but before we are going and adding up any more sculpting levels it's a good idea to observe your model that hey can I can I really make any changes or should I uh, should I do something uh, before I level up because it's not happening uh, just like a one jump you have to go through and inspect your model so this is all what I can do on this sculpting level or should I increase the sculpting level right away it's a common beginner mistake don't raise the level so here example I've had added personality to the head it's 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 showing up uh, but this rest of the body is a little bit off now one thing that you can really change I will use sculpt base mesh for now because I will want to uh, address the uh, outline is the snake hook brush snake hook brush is one really funny way to to add some changes okay it's like a move brush it's like a grab brush but it it twists and tweaks things around and if you're using it a good way it can really spice up things all right, it's much more like a goldfish, which was just too much, but I can add some. Oh yeah, just to, to just to be a little bit more, you know, mean. Okay, so looking through. All right, so what can I do with the with the fin? This fin. Uh, if the bell is that big, I may want to add something here because it's just too smooth. Now for that, I will use the draw sharp brush. Draw sharp brush is actually let me change the size. Is actually pushing things in, and it just creates a nice edge around. Now we don't have crazy resolution. This is the resolution that we have. So let me turn off. Uh, optimal display this is the reason for what we have but don't forget we are working on the sculpt base mesh so what does it mean when we are going back to object mode it will actually show up so there's not much information that we are adjusting right now this is how the details are not that crisp but if you are ready and i think we are good with the with the silhouette work we can go back to sculpt mode turn off sculpt base mesh and now it would be a little bit more more articulate all right so that's that's what I wanted to do I want to add some edges around here all right there's not much not many polygons here and there so we'll use smooth we definitely here at this face area we're definitely reaching a point where this this is we have to increase the, uh, the detail the level of detail all right so here uh, I'll also add some uh, edges around if this brush is too strong let me reduce it and maybe the size as well and just and just make it with more steps with more careful steps okay this one I like I like it a lot and it's probably an edge running through now here's one thing that you need to know that anytime if you press control it inverts the effect of the brush so if you want to pull out instead of pushing in you're holding control and it alters the change so i wanted to 
add a little bit of uh, bump in here to make it look more more organic and uh, even if I don't have reference in front of me I'm just creating the illusion of being organic by adding lines of spline and other parts right just to break up the light when the light is coming in and this can help in some cases okay uh, it's much more like an underworld creature than the shark um, okay so uh, what else um, to uh, increase the size before we increase it let me show you masking okay because masking could be a really really lifesaver now M is the hotkey for masking and I will just mask this area so start using the mask it is actually like you know, blowing smoke here it's like protecting that smoky grayish areas so I'm not very meticulous with this right now I just want to create a protective ring around this fin area the reason is because I want to inflate this fin a little bit so you can see the body how big it is I want to create an illusion that this uh, creature has some thick fins so I will use the inflate brush with a fairly large size and because the masking protects the model I can just go in and change those things and the reason I do this because I want to create this nice change here alright so that's the purpose I'm using the inflate brush illustrating these things okay so masking protects the whole thing to get rid of the mask is alt M but uh, let me undo this we also have an a pie menu for masking and if you remember that a is the hotkey for pie menu and you can grow shrink sharpen the mask uh, smooth mask and clear mask but usually a couple things that we are interested in is control I is inverting the mask so if you need the opposite this is what to do for example if you want to um, you know, let me press alt M to clear the mask and this is one example is uh, you can paint one areas with the mask M and just painting one area and just looking for that all right so I'm painting this one and I can control I and switch between okay so now I can work on the top part of the math control I and now I can to work in the bottom lip all right so this is how we use it and the other thing is that sh you should know of which one's a little bit different than in uh, other 3d applications that if you are pressing M again it will revert back to the mask uh, to the brush that you have used before you switch to mask so M is switching to mask M again is switching back to uh, your per previous brush alright so let me go M and I can clear the mask or something else I can press Ctrl M and what happens is let me switch to G to a grab brush and just show this to you so what it does is actually the mask is live so the mask is live I can move these parts uh, close the mouth a little bit so the mask is live but it's not visible so control M is for show hide mask which one is you know we have to be careful with this uh, but it's really really useful when you are painting something or you don't want to be disturbed by this dark gray color so alt M let me rid of the mask and uh, we are good I think we did what we can do in such resolution levels so I'll just pull this in a little bit okay so I'm, I'm happy with those and now we can move on and create more stuff and this is a time when subdivide can go well so now I will do subdivision and looking for number it's a hundred and fifty thousand and if I'm pressing alt E I can see now these these polygons are significantly smaller and uh, I can sculpt more what I can do maybe around the eye uh, and around the nose I can create few details the one brush that's really handy and let me drag this to be able to see the names so I'm dragging this one 
is uh, a clay brush is just it's a pretty it's a good brush but it's um, it's um, it's just simply building up a volume and it's not that much used it's it's working fine a lot of people using it but compared to the clay strips I think it's less popular now clay strips may may a little bit destroy this eye area so let me just carefully reduce the size and just give it a give it a go okay I'm using the shift to smooth it out if it's not working and this may happen with you as well don't worry use the sculpt resolutions okay so in real life this is happening most of the times when you have an overlapping or jaggy stuff you can use sculpt resolution walk down smooth on the lower resolution if it's still not enough walk down again and smooth on the lower resolution and then walk up and look for if you still have an artifact and walk up and look for if you still have an artifact all right so this is how you do it when you have something glitch in sculpting and it's true for old software this is how you do it so use sculpt levels walk them up and down and fix the sculpting issue on all levels because this is how it works this these uh, informations are stored for each level all right now so that is for uh, clay strips uh, we can add some volume here with clay strips oh yeah it's way too big so just adding up a little bit of volume and this is creating a less bumpy thing this is why uh, I like it a lot it's not as bumpy it's uh, a little bit more predictable than the than the draw brush if you do everything with the draw brush it will be lumpy so okay the power of it this should be a little bit higher and we can take a look at the brush settings and we have we can use auto smooth so here we are this is nice and we can use some auto smooth like a 0 0.1 value and yeah it's it even blends a little bit more and with a couple strokes i can build up the volume all right here as well so just creating the nice shape of it looking around maybe here we need a more volume uh, i can use uh, control and just scraping off a little bit of a, of, of a material to shape the thing don't forget to use uh, control and test things out here I want to use the brush to fill up this area so these clay brushes are working great for that okay and scraping from here that's nice good okay what else uh, maybe we can add some back smoothing out with a larger brush all right just breaking up the surface a little bit that's it and here in this area maybe the chest should be a little bit clear so adding up on here strength adjustment increase the strength a bit and there we are okay now what happens if you want to create a nice line running across the side of this now how to do it uh, first of all we will use draw sharp which one is great but if you're just starting out and you do this pull it may be not perfect so let me adjust first the size to make it a little bit smaller and adjust the strength because that was a little bit low so ne that's now pretty significant now the problem is can you see how jaggy it is and for that let me undo we can use a stroke type okay so th this is a this is one thing that you can use for every type of brushes and that is stabilized stroke so stabilized stroke and the size of the radius is set in the pixels so that's screen uh, resolution. Uh, let me go and use it. 75 is pretty large and 10 is the lowest level. So I like to use a fairly low level and then just 
grab it like this. And I did it with a mouse, so it's just, you know, it, it works pretty fine. But the problem is that this brush created this nice little uh, ridge around here, but it's um, it's not that, yeah, it's as sharp, but it's, it's still a large brush, and this is not that deep. Now, to refine this, we have a brush called Pinch. P is the hotkey for that one. For Draw Sharp, the hotkey is, if I remember, it's uh, Alt and, yeah, Space and 1. Uh, space, remembered, I have updated the tool pop-up. So, uh, when I'm using Space, this will bring up the toolbar. And uh, when I'm using Shift Space, actually, the timeline will play the animation. So, uh, in order, and it's really effective in sculpting, so a lot of people do this. In edit mode, preferences, uh, you can look for key binding and spacebar. And spacebar toolbar is set to only spacebar, and by default, it is set to shift and spacebar. So, this is one change I make. And the other change is I'm going to name and look for the function and the display animation. And here at the top row, shift space bar, so this was changed. The arrow shows me what changed, because there's always the restore button if I'm uh, going revert. And that is about, I've turned on shift for the space bar. And I like to use it this way, because uh, even if I'm in uh, object mode, I've just pressed the space bar, it will bring the toolbox here. All right, so we'll go back to sculpt mode and look for pinch. So P is the pinch brush, and uh, we have steady stroke, or I'm sorry, stabilized stroke. Uh, so many sculpting applications. <laughs> uh, okay, and maybe a little bit larger size, and let me turn on E to show what pinch does. So as I start pulling, it will just bring in the vertices, but it's not so strong. It's really, it's like a zipper. Okay, so let me go in RTE and change the strength of this pinch brush to be something significant. And I'm dragging and pulling, and now it just really, really pulls in the vertices. Okay, so RT, that's what it does, all right? It's just, you're real to to make this sharp but uh, this is working pretty well okay now what happens if we have a geometry and you want to sculpt on this area and these polygons are stretched we can just take a look and here we have slide relax okay so this is what you have to have and keep in mind uh, uh, managing with um, managing the uh, mesh because if you if you don't do it the right way, you can easily find yourself that it's just too stretched out, so you can't really make things work. I'm using some smoothing as well, and just using this slide and trying to slide from from the lower areas, just pulling these up. Okay, and the benefit is just it's not affecting the geometry, like the shape. It's not affecting the shape, but it is affecting the topology, that is the structure of these uh, stuffs, structure of the mesh. Okay, so that is about draw sharp using pinch in combination. Something that may be used a lot of times is I with uh, with the inflate. So if you want to create a wrinkle, for example, you can use draw sharp, you can use pinch on it, and then you can go back and use inflate and it can generate, it can, it can close even, even better. So you can see now it's just really, really pushing together. All right, so that's what I did. Okay, and um, now what else? We have uh, fill, flatten, and scrape, and multiplane scrape. These are very, very useful tools. So the uh, the smooth brush we already using it a lot, but what flatten does? Flatten is actually just looking for a surface, and it just 
And like an iron, it flattens that out. So shift F, maybe the strength should be a little bit higher. And here's the here's the area. And it just samples the thing and it creates a somewhat platter surface. Alright, so it's just too much. Let me reduce it. And there we are. Alright, it's great if you want to find some edges in your sculpt. It's great if you want to simplify your sculpt and, and using some uh, main uh, areas, just clean uh, forms of uh, planar surfaces, especially at the beginning, and and just to, trying to develop the sculpt as you go. All right, so maybe this area here I can use some. Let me show it. All right, it's working fine. Now the benefit of using flatten is just um, it it can regulate things. So you can play with, for example, the overall height of different wrinkles and other parts. So let me show this. I'm switching to uh, a clay thumb. So that is about uh, shift uh, and I'm sorry, spacebar and three. And uh, in my case, and just using this and adding a clay thump, and it melts the area a little bit. Oh, clay thump. Okay. So I'm switching to clay strips and spacebar two, and just adding up here and there, smoothing them some areas out inside adding more and I think the resolution is off so we need to have a high resolution so subdivide subdivide it further it takes some time and let me see the values now it's um, uh, uh, 300,000 uh, but it will be better to you know sculpting with these can you see how this now this is quite delicate stuff and I'm not going crazy, I don't raise the subdivision, I don't raise the sculpting levels until I reach a point. And here, just to adding those shapes on the side. Again, and I'm just using a mouse, right? So I like the look of it. So we can go in and maybe add some, uh, um, some drawing on top of to add some bulkiness and then going back and f flatten is great just to okay I want to flatten this area but here I want to leave it high flatten this area to create a nice and a little bit more interesting and believable rhythm of the shape. Okay, so this was flat, this one is a bit more uh, bumpy, this was flat again, here this area I'll flat it inside. So it adds nice variation uh, to the shapes. So f using flatten is not just, uh, you know, completely create flattened surfaces, this is also like helping to create the illusion of real things. Okay. Um, once we have this, uh, there's something I want to show, and that is nudge. And nudge is great if you want to pull things together. Okay, so now I'm using nudge and, and just creating this wrinkle like thing here. Or uh, uh, we can, for example, push the volume in here closer to the other thing but this this one is working pretty slow because of the resolution so I'm going down a bit and then it speeds up All right so Nuge needs a lot of sampling it requires a lot of information to be collected all around so this is it may slow down again this is the reason why we are using the sculpt resolutions okay now Something really, really useful uh, is coming into my mind. So before we are going into, you know, adding some asymmetrical details and other parts, we have to take care of and talk about um, the uh, how we can organize some of the shapes, and we'll use face sets for those. 
and it's really valuable especially if you want to pose your model now to do that uh, we need to go back to a lower level of sculpt so we are going back to the lower level alt e everything is visible now uh, the edges are seen and we are going to viewport overlays and face sets are turned on here's a brush draw face sets the brush size is fairly large so I can do that and uh, and select the the brushes here so I'm using just start painting and this is a random color assigned to the stuff and when I was started painting it's hard to see now if I'm uh, just click it again and start it will just create a new and new and new uh, polygon group uh, these faces but if you're holding control and starting from a color it will just fill that area with that the, with the existing polygon group color yeah looking around holding control adding and holding control and repairing Right, so this is a nice and very easy way to make the changes. Okay, this will be a somewhat larger segment. I'm holding the left mouse button until I reach everything. Alright, the larger the polygons are, the easier the painting process is. And you don't necessarily have to hold down a polygon for long. So, I don't need to hold it now. And actually it's almost done. I'm holding control start painting and it still remembers that we are adding to this existing group. Alright, so the next will be here. Control to start and then just making the paint. Probably this one should be added as well. It's very similar to the Photoshop Lasso. So this one. Now here something else could wait it may work. So if we are using uh, Shift V and start dragging, Shift W, I mean, we can paint fairly easy. So that is like growing uh, the uh, face group. So Shift and W. And I'm holding control and just start painting. Alright, that's it. And a new polygroup. So we're adding a couple of polygroups, a couple of face sets to, to be able to manipulate things in the end. Alright. <coughs> I will add one more to the head and maybe to the mouth area. So for the mouth I will use the Shift W and start growing this. Alright, it detects things. Okay, I'll, I'm happy with this one and this is also selecting inside the mouth, which one is great. I will add to this and start looking for painting on the inside it may be a little bit tricky here and there but it's done this one's great also shift w and start painting on here you're looking for the nice part well, yes it's great and the rest is colored white which one is also the a polygroup and here shift w and start painting on and looking for the oh it's too much here and holding control and add manually these two more okay that's nice okay so here we are we have these face sets and the reason we have these uh, one thing that we can use is if you are hovering over and press H you can isolate an area so for example if I want to model inside I can choose X and holding the control and pushes in 
increase the sculpt resolution and maybe smooth out things that I have. So in the, even in the lower I had some artifacts and I can smooth it down and it's great. And if I'm pressing H again everything is coming back. Alright, so second this one H, everything is coming back, which one's nice. I have these artifacts, so I'm holding those smooth, smoothing things out, and that helps a lot. It's very, very, very useful if you have fingers and tiny parts uh, laying around. So this is one thing, H again, to uh, leave other things. Uh, if you're hovering over and press Shift H, it will hide away segments. Okay, so that's what you can do. And uh, Ctrl H, I'm sorry, I'm just testing. Alt H is uh, giving back everything, and H is also just showing that what you have. Right, so it's a pretty neat little feature. The other reason why we're using this is not just to simplify sculpting, but we can use it for posing as well. So, where is our pose tool? Here it is, pose tool. And uh, uh, we don't really have to make it visible, but let me turn off uh, the wireframe. And for example, I want to alter the uh, position of the fins of the tail. So now it's updating. First of all, I will break symmetry, pressing the X, and I uh, want to uh, change uh, this in 3D space. So when I start creating this, it will create some ugly little tears. And to manage that, we are going to the tool settings, and this is the pose brush. And the pose brush rotation is uh, depending on topology. So what it does is, it tries to snap. Can you see how it tries to snap? But this is not really, really useful for us. So one thing that I will do before I will give it a try, I will just go and lower the sculpting levels because that way it may be a little bit smoother as a change when we start bending, maybe not that at the lowest but at one level uh, going back to object, uh, sorry, um, tool property and this will be topology based on face sets and when this one is active it snaps to the start of the face set so here we are and pulling it out and now I can move it and rotate it this way. Now if the brush size is larger then it may be capable to link from an earlier face set and we can start bending from that position. Okay, so you can play with the brush size and just make it somewhat more refined. So that's it now. And if we are holding control, it is actually twisting. Alright, so brush size. If I want to alter the fin, reduce the brush size look for the position and I'm holding control and then I will be able to rotate this slightly. Okay, so I want to open up the head part so like arr, I'm coming in. Yeah, it's just too much. Rest size should be a little bit lower. Yeah, and open the mouth. We can twist it if we wish. So now that we have the open mouth area, I will I will keep it closed and just switch to a smooth brush that's shift s and yeah shift s and using the smooth brush a little bit and now we have this pose okay and uh, maybe switching back to the pose brush and with a large one starting from here Uh, yeah, posing. This area, this area should be smaller. Okay, there we are. Alright, so it's pretty, pretty messed up already. 
Uh, we have so many things going around, but that's how it goes. Uh, we can give it a try to use a grab brush, and um, <coughs> uh, we can also use uh, to make some corrections and just fixing things if there's something to fix. This is a little bit offset. So that's that looks cool. Okay, so there we are. Now, what else we can do? Uh, of course, we can add uh, other things. We can add other other items. So let me first uh, go back to the highest level of sculpting and see what we have. We don't need these anymore. We also don't need the colors. So I will go to viewport overlays and turn off face sets visibility. Alright, so it is much cleaner, and uh, maybe we want to um, create eyes. Now let me go to object mode, and this is how it looks in object mode, this is how it looks in sculpt mode. Remember that we have used only sculpt base match only at the first stages, so this is why the silhouette is looking like this. So keep, keep this in mind. Okay, if you want to make sure that uh, these things are really uh, familiar, then you can change the level and viewport, set it to 1, and then if you switch to object mode, now it will just show what we actually have in sculpting. So, uh, this causes some, not issues, but this, this makes the change. Now, shift A and M and U to create the cylinder, I'm sorry, the sphere and uh, spacebar T to move it and transform and scale it and G on the x-axis scale it further and just to zoom in and G and look for the front viewport by the way if you're using the tilde key uh, it's the Hungumblad uh, O in here but in the US keyboards it's the tilde key uh, that will bring up the views and you can switch to front whatever and top so I will just go back to front and G and side view control 3 to the side view and G and move it to the side and push us in and here we are and I can shift D and grab it and move it over I'm not really worried about both of the eyes so I'm not making them symmetrical what I will do, I will sculpt on these, and the reason I do this is just to to give you an idea about how to um, handle things when you have multiple items to be sculpted on. So here's the item I have uh, selected, uh, going to sculpt mode, and if you want to sculpt in here, it's ready, so now we can already sculpt uh, if there's a draw brush and the brush size is fairly small. We can actually use control to push this in a little bit to create a kind of a uh, an iris. But this is really low in resolution. So what I will do, I will press control two, and that will add a multi-res modifier when it's sculpt level two. And I'm holding down control and just maybe a little bit larger brush, just moving in. Uh, if I want to make it a little bit sharper around the edge, P pinch brush and just uh, going through and now I have the strobe set and I can't really go lower but I can reduce the factor so that factor can change up things and now it's a little bit sharper G grab brush so if it's not perfect uh, I'm okay with it because it's sculpted so I can just add uh, this little look and if you want to go you can make the changes now as you see this mesh is not in the high resolution so when we are in the level of viewport it says zero so when I'm switching models I can switch models by clicking on here and uh, now it's the sphere the other sphere this is the actual I am working on and this is the cube model this is the actual shark so every time you switch it will switch multi res on and off to the level of viewport so keep that in mind if you want to create matching items for example the eyeball you want to clearly see what the eyeball does make it work uh, and then crank up the levels 
and then you, when you switch back to the model you can see it's uh, live both in high resolution so that's how it goes to quickly change between objects use alt q and when you use alt q it will just highlight it in red and will give you a good feedback on uh, which model is selected so now this one is selected and now the eyes are selected okay so that's how it goes this is a nice thing now what happens if you reach a point where you just you you don't really want to increase the overall resolution so sculpting is okay everything is fine first of all yes you can save it so I will just uh, save this whole thing as uh, Sharky uh, we have record and records number two and save as okay just now it's closing up hopefully no yes we have blend 2 closing this one and uh, select the model All right it's just something is frozen wait a sec so when you want to reach to uh, even higher details but not on every aspect so what does it mean not on all polygons but you still need more we can choose and use dime topo so dime topo is also good for creating initial meshes when you don't have a base mesh and you want just to start from the sphere and pull things around uh, that's also capable to do it but it could be really messy i like to do it for repair fixes and adding details once the base sculpture is good once the base sculpture is posed so it's not really animation friendly it is just for sculpting mostly and again for repairing things uh, this is a different technique than multi-res so for because we have now saved it uh, I will just go in and apply the multi-res modifier so here uh, just to make sure everything is at the highest level I'm going to object mode and everything is nice and set we have these fairly high number of polygons and I will hit Control A to apply the modifier and this is the density that we have so but we can go even higher so for example if I want to create some uh, further details I can do that nicely now uh, to do that let me go back to sculpting mode and turn on Dine Topo now there is a warning message which one is just uh, uh, vertex data detected vertex colors UVs and etc so usually receive this uh, pop-up message this is basically about you have texture information and this is because it's an imported file here but we have no texture information or the, what the information what we have is not really valid so we can go hit OK and it will turn on uh, Dine Topo. Now Dine Topo, this is a little bit confusing so if I'm starting with uh, maybe a draw brush switching this now it's updating to Dine Topo and I'm starting pulling this is what happens so again what it does it uses a, a resolution and uh, that resolution is uh, uh, it could be set to a different style now detailing basically you have a couple options what I do like is constant detail what does it mean if you adjust the resolution value it will stick to that value this is important for most of the cases especially if you don't see what you do because now I have this turned on so I see what I do and what I'm doing but uh, but in many cases it can be confusing now here's something that we need to take care of the resolution when you are set it to constant detail then you can set a fixed resolution now it's not guesswork here's the eyedropper again which one is just it's not visible if you have relative detail on constant detail pick select a sample and it will tell okay this time type is 45 uh, 54 now if we want to create higher like wrinkle details I will just double this number like a hundred and when I start using the draw and let me show this on you I will use a smaller draw size and use control 
to dig in and start creating those. Now let me zoom in. Can you see how these these additional polygons uh, points are created? So not this this hundred for this area is not much. So I'll increase it to two hundred. And this is why we have to have the wires on. Okay, so I'm holding control, and now, now, now we are adding geometry. Okay, so Shift E, I'm sorry, Alt E to C. Yeah, that's a wrinkle I'm I'm, I'm talking about. Uh, maybe I want to use clay stripes to build up the, an eyelid, something like an eyelid. So I'm I'm recording, and this is a fairly old computer, so this is why it's lagging. But again, it's detailing. So this is fairly high, let me show this. Maybe not even that much we need, so maybe we can go back to 100. And just do it there. Alright, it's, it's much less accurate. But this is, this is basically the limitation of this rig. I mean this computer. And using smoothing. And smoothing also can update the mesh. Alright, so that's what I'm looking for. Now, if I want to create some scars and other things, uh, or smoothing could be an issue, this is what happens. Let me turn on. I'm using Shift key and try to smooth this out, but this is basically no resolution. So here's a trick when, that's used with Dynetopo. So, because smoothing will not generate resolution, I'm going to draw mode. Draw mode will generate resolution. But I don't want to add to the surface. So this is why I made the undo. What I can do is Shift F, reduce the strength to zero, walk through an area to build in, just paint in resolution basically, sculpt in resolution basically. And now we have quite a few. And then we can switch to smooth. That's Shift S. And now I can smooth things out easily. Okay, so this will be a smooth model so I don't have to all the time increase the resolution just because one area needs some love yeah so what we do here is this is a nice even good quality mesh here that has fair enough resolution but here the resolution was lacking so this is why I added more to that area Okay, here what we sh what we see there is some issues, so I'm using the smooth key, smooth things out, and just simply some areas. Now, if something happens like this, we can also use draw, and to fix areas like this, we can use dyn topo and reduce dyn topo detail about fifty, and draw has no strength. So what I will do, I will paint over and it simplifies the mesh. And now I can use the smooth. This this 50 value was quite drastic. So maybe I will switch to 100. And look for that. And here's this, because it updates. And now I can smooth it out. And it, I can go back even further and repaint the detail. And then use the smooth brush. And now it's much more, uh, there, there's no collapse uh, what we had before. Okay, so that's that's how things are working with Dynetopo. I had no symmetry on, so this is, you know, for presentation, for example, okay, I want to create a, uh, a picture of this uh, sharky thing from this area. This is how it goes, so I have um, some things to touch up with Dynetopo. So that's what I did. Now remeshing works a little bit differently and uh, if I don't save it, I can save it for now and add a different name. So test blend and plus save as and using remesh. Now this is um, not a complicated thing so let me turn off Dynetopo by the way, we have a hotkey for Dynetopo, so that is uh, Control D. So it tells you, okay, it's Control D. This remesh. Now remesh 
it works only if you don't have any modifier uh, on a not multi res for example so remesh is there's a voxel size this is the resolution of the remesh now here's a preview if you press shift r it will give us a preview of this voxel size so let me go in here shift r and this is 10 centimeters uh, I will go with about you know four centimeters. That's that with this preview. And if I'm pressing Control R, it will actually create that remesh. Now it may say, take some time. This is how it looks. So this was before. Let me make the undo. So this was before, and when we are using remesh, this is how it looks. So redo. It is just. It's uh, it's somewhat dynamic. What does it mean when you every time when you press Ctrl R, it will recalculate, and the purpose of this is to create evenly sized polygons. So no matter what, you will be able to sculpt on this. It's just like a two D picture. Uh, this is how it goes. Of course, this resolution is way coarse. So if we don't want to lose details, we can go back and enjoy a higher resolution and zoom out a bit and use shift R and that was 4.2 centimeters now I'm definitely need to go lower and I don't go 1.5 centimeter we are this shark is about 7 meters so that's a fairly small amount of detail let me press ctrl R and see how it will update and it takes some time it takes some time to be performed and as I see now it's good so alt e in these samples are much smaller areas are much cleaner but we have some issue that you have to take care of and you have to know about that every time you are using remesh remesh is projecting all the stuff together and if you have intersecting parts guess what it will weld those so this is why it's good for cleaning up 3d scanned data or it's great if you are building a corrector and that will be the last option for today uh, how to use remesh when you are building up a corrector uh, but when the big difference between multi-res and dyn tempo and remesh is multi-res it has a foundation it has a base it has a base mesh and you can go back to that base mesh and edit it uh, like you can add further modifiers if you wish as in some cases you can actually use it for animation but this one is like a still 3d model remeshes for developing a concept if you want to animate a model that was generated by remesh or you want to create uh, a sophisticated texture for it or anything uh, complex then you have to rebuild the model based on your high resolution model and that is called retopology now retopology is a different topic it's more intermediate um, but here as a principle uh, this is how remesh works okay uh, let me show you an example leave object mode and we can create a new model so shift a m and a cube and if we want just to create a base mesh so let me reduce it shift a m and maybe a sphere just move it in and just make an intersection it's just like a boolean and you can select both and these are not connected in any ways and you can press ctrl j to join them and switch back to sculpt mode and if you just want to sculpt on these guys with a grab tool and this you can only have these these couple points and not much okay so this is we only have these and and even this is not really uh, valid together so you can see it's not valid these are just joined as they are but if you go in the rem remesh and press ctrl r and hit remesh now you have a face you can sculpt out so I'm using them smoothing uh, I can use the clay strips and just um, reduce the size of the brush and I can sculpt on it uh, this way you can even build up a full figure so imagine that this one is a head uh, there's another uh, cylinder as a neck there's uh, another sphere as, uh, as a body and you can also do that 
uh, in a way when you're not joining them right away. Okay, so let me show an example of that as well. So let me leave object mode and uh, shift A, M and U, that will be the head. So I will lift this up and scale it down like, like someone is riding on a shark. So scale it down, uh, lift this up. Okay, and what we do need, shift D and on the Z axis, just moving it down and maybe scaling this up a this, little, this maybe the body. Okay, we need a cylinder, so shift A, M and Y to create the cylinder, shrinking it, uh, scanning it on the Z axis to make it a little bit longer, even more, and pulling it in position, shrinking it down, you know, this is a neck, this maybe the body should be a little bit higher, uh, yeah, we need another sphere, that may be the shoulders, so shift D, moving it, scale it down, mm, the front view, so we're moving it into position, and that that may be a shoulder, it's just it's just an idea, so it's not, it could be done in multiple ways, uh, shift D, and copy, and just starting to, to build, a, build a hand, lift this up, you can make it horizontal like T-pose in the beginning and once you're done with the shape because it's easier to manage the fingers and everything then you can rotate down the hand. So here we are. These are these are the main shapes we're looking for. So what we can do is select this guy and go to you know sculpt mode and shift R and control R that's fine and using the big grab brush we can turn on X and uh, just just working on the on the, on the stuff and yeah, just pushing this in and pulling out and control R to uh, do it again and F and reduce the size so if the resolution is too small we can do it uh, a little bit more yeah but it's too dense looking for yeah that may be good control R and smooth now it's looking much smoother and we can check the numbers it's 15,000 which one is not that high so I can use this shift smoothing and use the grab to pull out the nose okay like this in distance uh, we can use the uh, clay strips to paint an eyelid to the figure okay and then later on we can move forward maybe we need the big grab tool to make it flatter a little bit uh, if you wish you can uh, you can draw a mask for example so M draw a mask uh, so uh, control I to invert the mask and use a grab tool a large one and just pull out this could be the ear Okay, Ctrl M to clear the mask. I'm oh, sorry, that's just hiding the mask. Alt M to clear the mask. And then we can use Alt Q to update and switch to the body. And um, maybe the resolution we don't care yet. Be careful because when you're switching models, it remembers the uh, mirror function. Okay, so I'm switching to the body and I have to go up and turn on mirror. If, uh, if you're using basic remesh and Dine Topo, if you forget about making it symmetrical, this is what you can do. So Alt Q, selecting the head, and X is turned off, so on purpose. And I'm now changing the size, and maybe using, you know, draw and just build up, a, uh, build up a shape. Okay, which one maybe, this one's active. Uh, strength, strength was reduced, yeah, because I've used it in, in Dine Topo. So this is here's here's this bump or or you know there's a what a, what a cavity for the ear that that looks better okay I don't want to make it so ugly so here's a cavity around the ear and I forgot about this now before I just refresh and updating uh, I can refresh and smooth it and uh, but how to make it mirrored we can turn on X and mirror minus X to positive X positive is this side. So we have to switch to plus x to minus and symmetrize, and boom, there we go. Okay, it doesn't work with multi-res, but it's working with Dynetopo and um, 
and no, the rematch. Okay, so going back again, here's this uh, torso and G and uh, a big one, and I'm pulling this up to create the shoulders, right? So the belly should be a little bit more flat, and um, yeah, it'll just it'll just a little bit of an upper body, maybe a smaller brush, and pulling this in smoothing things out pulling a little bit more to create the shoulders just that lifting this up slightly maybe he is a little bit you know heavy yeah okay so there we are and now ctrl r to remesh and use the shift key to smooth it out and uh, let me see that's about 2000 polygons so you can you can progress this way and in the end when you want to uh, make the whole thing, you can leave isolation mode, I'm sorry, uh, sculpt mode to object mode, select all these guys and Ctrl J them and go back to sculpt mode and uh, Ctrl R to uh, remesh and now everything is there so you can go in here and smooth things out and for example if you want to create the neck you can use the draw strips and okay now we have those want to create a clavicle so i'm holding control and pushing in maybe a little bit less intense okay right so if the if the resolution is not enough because we have so many things going on you just throw uh, shift r and see what the resolution is currently that's three we can reduce it to about 2.5 i'm not going crazy right away okay what i just did here okay that was destroying so I'm not going crazy right away I'm just pressing Ctrl R and look for the changes it may take some time but it's now much more dense some 3000 okay it's not very fast uh, compared to multi-res multi-res is reacting a little bit better but it's it's a reasonable time and you can create nice things around and despite it's almost a full it's a torso with a head and neck and everything. It's 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 looking pretty good. Okay, so that that's one way to build up a character. And, and yes, you can add the eyeballs, uh, create clothing on it, and, and other parts if you wish, or sculpting the cl uh, clothing right away. All right, so these are the examples. Uh, let me just uh, hide these away. Now we have uh, automatically a new. Uh, face set so here here are the face sets that we're looking for so these are created because these were individual objects which one is a really neat thing when you're dealing with uh, sculpting okay so there we are uh, these are the basic principles of sculpting and I uh, hope you enjoyed and have fun see you next time goodbye